It is finally here, the 2017 football season here at Bobby Lackey Stadium. The Wildcats, yes, the rank number two in the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, we had that dream of uh, being 10-0 and, 0 and you know, uh, going out there and being the first West Coast High School to go 10-0. and 0. So we're a little bit excited. The big three, we like to call them, Lefevre and JC Vargas, and then of course Roy Pedraza, the MVP player from a year ago. Well, we're pretty excited because we're ranked so high and we knew we had a lot coming back, you know, with me, JC, Rich, people call us three-headed monster. For the first time ever in the history of the school that they have ranked this high coming into the season. We had all these weapons out there to throw to, to give the ball a handoff to, and just to make touchdowns and make our team just that much better. Uh, it, was just, it was just exciting because, you know, we were going for that 10-0. It was a season filled with anticipation until injuries changed it all. But the Wildcats figured it out on the bumpy road to the postseason. And it is going to be Pedraza going ahead and he is a little slow getting up. We'll have to see what's going on. I just heard a pop and when I fell, like, I couldn't get up. And then the trainers came and they're doing all these things to my knees to make sure like if it was all right. It was the first district game of the season when the 2016 Offensive Player of the Year, Roy Pedraza, went down with an injury. And if you know Roy Pedraza as I do, uh, he usually jumps right up. Nobody knew how serious the injury was, but this photo taken on the sidelines during the game was a sign that things were not looking good for the Wildcats. And then I got to the sideline and I knew like it was something pretty serious and then I just broke down. They were down from the big three to the big two. 6'4 quarterback Richard Lefevre with one of the best arms in the valley and J.C. Vargas. Wide open. All area from a year ago. Then, in the second district game, Vargas goes down with a leg injury and ends up in surgery. He was done for the season. With two of the big three now down and another running back, Freddy Gonzalez, already out from an injury in pre-district, West Lacouiste was no longer a force in District 32-6A and dropped to number 10 in the rankings. This wasn't the season Coach Burgett was anticipating, and there were other issues on his mind. After a loss to San Benito, he revealed during a live show that his father was battling cancer. Uh, you know, I've had a tough year with my, my dad getting cancer a couple months ago, and he's in real bad shape. Coach Burgett finds out about the health of his father about a month before the season. He followed in his footsteps, playing high school football and college ball as well. He always wanted me to play full uh, football and always wanted me to play defense because he thought I could, he dreamed about me playing in the NFL, but he goes, not at running back. But I didn't listen to him. You know, I went ahead and played running back. And Growing up in Kansas, the two had a typical father-son relationship. Growing up, you know, fishing all the time. We loved to fish. Uh, He's one of those uh, fathers that, you know, made me do things correct, made me do things right. Coaching his team and thinking about his father at home has not been easy. It's hard to be here sometimes, mentally. I told him as soon as the season's over, I'm coming back and, you know, get to see him. And, you know, he's doing well. He's playing poker. Me and him got that. Uh, we got to go to Vegas. We're going we're gonna to hit it rich. Seems like when we leave Vegas every time, we're broke. Amid the injuries and news from home, Coach Burgett found some perspective from an unlikely source. And when Roy got hurt, man, I was down. And then JC gets hurt, and I was really down. But they say, Coach, there's bigger things in life. We got bigger things in life, you know, than you know, just a high school football game. And you know, and when they said that to me, they got me going again. And you know, thinking about my dad, I mean, he's fighting. He's going to fight till the end. So. You know, he'll be all right. Quarterback Chapa drops back looking for a Without any running backs with experience, the, the Wildcats drop another district game to Los Fresnos. 
and he is in for a Falcon touchdown. They had a one and two district record and were sitting in fifth place. But they learned something in that game. Lefevre. That Richard Lefevre was a threat at running with the football as he rushes for over 100 yards in the loss. Keep it and he's gonna rush. When he busted, I know somebody's gonna catch him. But if you watch the film, Sometimes them little safeties and corners are just sitting there and they're sort of backpedaling, going, please somebody tackle him, please somebody. And he punishes them. I personally didn't think I could do that because, I mean, 6'4", 260, you know, and not many, I mean, I guess not many people could do that. So it was just, it was exciting for me. And then just to see the kids get excited too, it kind of just built, built more confidence and everything up. It is your Westaco East Wildcat taking on the Harlingen Cardinals. But the schedule didn't get any easier. Harlingen, the defending district champion, was next. And they just beat San Antonio team, a really good San Antonio team. And Reagan, that's the only loss they had was to Harlingen. I'm thinking, oh man, then I watched the film. I wish I wouldn't have done that. Didn't get to sleep all week. Our intensity had to be higher at a higher level than usual. Uh, during the weeks and it just we had to do anything we can to prepare for that week and looking to put points on the board first here the Wildcats minus three key players jumped out to a seven nothing lead and he's in the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown you know I told him in the Harlingen let's just play one play at a time I don't care what the score is I really didn't I said let's just go play one play at a time and if we win that first play let's try to win the second play then the third play left side and Lefevre is in easily the Wildcats score two touchdowns in the first half and surprisingly lead 14-7 at the half. Started to realize, wait a minute, you know, we are football players too and, you know, they lift weights and they run and, you know, they started to buy in a little bit more. Lefevre was having a career game. This pass put the Wildcats up 20-10. to all alone going to the end zone. The Wildcats are up 2017 late in the game and need a first down to kill the clock. All 11 men in the box. This time he's gonna run off to his left side. He's running, he's at the 30. When Lefevre has this signature run for the 2017 season. 30, and he's finally brought down at the 25 yard line. There's 15 seconds left on the clock. Everybody just kind of flew by and it was just like, <laughs> I saw open grass and I was like, what was going on? <laughs> It kind of felt like a dream, you know. Lefevre accounted for nearly 350 yards, 145 of that on the ground. More important, Richard established himself as the leader of the team and the go-to guy on the field. He's knocking people over. In my mind, I knew it built the confidence in all the other players and other teammates that, okay, we could do this, that we're not done and we're gonna keep going. We're gonna, try, we're gonna strive for greatness. He put this team on his back and said, guys, we're not done yet. He misses Roy, he misses Jason, he misses Freddie. But he's the one that told me, coach, we're going to make the playoffs. With the support of his players and his mind on his father back home, Coach Burgett continued focusing on winning football games because that is what his father wanted him to do. Well, you know, my dad's a tough guy. I mean, I, I'll tell you that right now. And he told me if anything happens, he don't expect me to come home. So he just told me to win football games. And the Wildcats have done just that. With Richard Lefevre leading the way, they qualified for the playoffs. And on the final game of the regular season, he put a punctuation mark on his recent success, scoring six touchdowns, three passing, and three running. And it is caught! Touchdown, Wildcats! What a great season as your West Queens Wildcats begin their playoff run. Carlos Robledo, K-West.